Hi everyone, Mrs V here and today we're going to look at whether a molecule is polar or not even if it has polar bonds. So let's get our PowerPoint on, let's get cracking. In this video tutorial we're going to look at the relationship between polar bonds and polar molecules. Now I know what you're thinking, a molecule is polar if it contains polar bonds. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple, but we will learn how the two are connected. First, let's define what we mean by the term polar molecule. A polar molecule is one that has one end slightly positively charged and the other end slightly negatively charged. A nonpolar molecule does not have this charge separation across the molecule. As you can see, we use the delta plus and delta minus on the bonds in the molecule to show polarity. We learned about those in our previous video on polar bonds. A polar molecule usually contains polar bonds. There are some molecules in which the polarity of the molecule is being caused by a non-bonded electron pair, but it's usually a polar molecule has polar bonds. What this diagram is not showing you though, is that some non-polar molecules also have polar bonds. In carbon dioxide, the electronegativity of the carbon is 2.5 and the electronegativity of the oxygen is 3.5. That's a polar bond. In carbon tetrachloride, the electronegativity of chlorine is 3.0 and carbon is 2.5. So these are also polar bonds. The reason that a molecule can be nonpolar even though it has polar bonds is that those polar bonds are in a symmetrical arrangement. If we consider each polar bond or dipole to be a vector, then the vector sum of the dipoles is zero. That means there is no overall charge vector or dipole on the molecule. This makes the molecule nonpolar overall. You can think in carbon dioxide, these two vectors are pulling equally in opposite directions, so there is no overall effect. Carbon dioxide is nonpolar. If you're not very familiar with adding vectors, we can think of a more realistic example. A plane is flying north and the wind is blowing toward the east. Which way will the plane end up going? Well, the wind will blow it off course, so it will end up going a little bit towards northeast. Exactly how far will depend on the plane's speed and the wind speed. We can show this with vectors. We will use the vectors to show the velocity of the plane and the wind. We always add our vectors tip to tail, so to add them we start the wind vector from the tip of the plane vector. To get the sum we draw a vector from the start of the first vector to the end of the last vector. This represents the combination of the plane's velocity and the wind's velocity. This is the actual speed and direction, or velocity, of the plane. Let's apply this same idea to the polar bonds in a molecule. In water, the bonds are polar. We can show these dipoles with vectors. Charge vectors are usually drawn pointing toward the negative end. Let's add these vectors using our tip to tail method. Let's draw the resultant vector, the sum of the two vectors, that is the overall effect of those two polar bonds together. Redraw the overall vector on its own and remember charge vectors point towards the negative. We can see this means the water molecule has a positive and a negative end. The water molecule is polar. Let's try sulfur trioxide. The bonds are polar. Oxygen has a higher electronegativity than sulfur. Let's draw the charge vectors. Now let's add them tip to tail. We ended up right back at the start. The three vectors add up to zero. This means there's no overall dipole, so sulfur trioxide is nonpolar. When a molecule is symmetrical, then it is nonpolar even if it contains polar bonds. These are the symmetrical shapes, the triatomic linear, trigonal planar, tetrahedral, trigonal bipyramid, and octahedral. When a molecule is asymmetrical, then the polar bonds will cause an overall dipole moment, and that molecule will be polar. The asymmetrical shapes that we've learned are the diatomic linear, bent, and trigonal pyramid. You have to be careful though. You have to be paying attention to what's in the molecule. Sometimes not all the bonds are the same, and that can mean a symmetrical molecule might just end up being polar. Just look at those charge vectors and add them. If you get the zero vector, it's nonpolar. 
If you get an overall vector, then it is a polar molecule. Well, that's all for today. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please give it a like. And also subscribe to my channel, watch more videos, learn more wonderful chemistry. I'm going to see you guys in the next video.